So I have some additional details for you about the supposed Metroid Prime 4 development cycle and what ultimately led to its cancellation, and also maybe some good news in there about Retro Studios' involvement that might give some people some peace of mind, since some people feel like uh, Retro Studios didn't maybe want to develop the game, uh, and maybe they're just being forced to do it, and people are worried about the quality and all that stuff. Uh, in addition to that, we also have some information, apparently, about the Metroid Prime Trilogy HD. That is an HD, obviously, upport or remastering of the original Metroid Prime Trilogy. And all of this information comes from the senior editor, Imran Khan. I apologize if I butchered his name. Uh, he is a senior editor at Game Informer, so a really well-respected publication, obviously, you know, with its ties to GameStop and all that. But he's got really no reason to lie about this, uh, and he's just been sitting on this stuff because why else would he bring it forward unless something actually happened? Uh, and, well, obviously something did. Today, Nintendo announced that Metroid Prime 4 has been basically delayed because it is being rebooted by Retro Studios. Now, here is what we learned. The problem came uh, when it came to Metro Prime 4 from Nintendo's experimental ad hoc development process. Metro Prime 4 was being made in parts in different countries. Some studios were actually progressing smoothly with the project, while others were having a lot of trouble. We've seen some other games do this uh, in the past, by the way, and uh, it usually does not work out. A game essentially should always be made 100% under the umbrella of one area rather than spread out throughout the world. But uh, again, other games have pulled this off and some have been successful, but a lot of games out there that try this, uh, this little ad hoc format don't work. Uh, and I'm actually curious if Nintendo does this with other games as well, and it does work for them. I don't know, but apparently it wasn't working for Metroid Prime 4. All right, so get, getting back into what, what uh, Imran Khan had to say. Um, he says, Nintendo started to think the game needed to be all under one roof to set things straight, which is obviously, you know, when some parts are going well, some parts aren't. Uh, now, here's the thing. You know, how does Nintendo decide where they're going to set this game all under one? After all, some of the studios that were making parts of the game actually were progressing well. So maybe that's a studio that should be in charge of the entire project, right? That, you know, Nintendo's thinking, hey, we need to put this all under one roof. So how did Retro Studios end up getting the project at the end? Here's what he had to say. Retro made the pitch for their involvement, and they put together a demo that Nintendo liked. So what it was was Retro wasn't one of the studios that was part of it, but uh, knowing what was happening to the Metroid Prime series, you have to assume at least somebody on the team kind of had an idea of what was happening to the form of Metroid they created, that they founded. That Prime series is very much Retro Studios' baby. Uh, they saw what was happening, and they're like, look... Uh, maybe we should put together a pitch here and uh, see if, see what Nintendo thinks about letting us take a crack at the game. And that's what they did. They created a playable demo. They showed it to Nintendo, and Nintendo's like, oh, yeah, that's that's what Metroid Prime is, uh, which makes a lot of sense because, they're the, they're the after all, they are the studio that created Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2 and Metroid Prime 3. So for them to put together an impressive demo that made Nintendo like it and be like, look, we got to scrap what we're doing and let Retro Studios do it isn't a surprise. It also means that Retro Studios are the ones that were proactive and reached out to Nintendo with a playable demo to try to tell Nintendo, hey, we would like to take on this project. So uh, this actually should make people feel a little better about how uh, some people thought maybe Retro Studios didn't have the talent. Well, guess what? Nintendo made this decision based on a demo Retro put together for the game. That lets you know that Retro Studios must have had the talent if Nintendo was so impressed by that demo, they scrapped all of their investment in all these other studios, including some studios that might have been progressing pretty well on the project. Probably to the disappointment of those studios, by the way, that were probably really happy to be working with a first party Nintendo IP for potentially their first time ever. Rumor has it was Bandai Namco and a bunch of their studios that was behind it. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting to see how that came to be. Retro Studios wanted to do it and they were afforded the ability and the opportunity to do it. So, uh, ultimately, that should make the decision even better. Some might question why wasn't Retro given the opportunity originally? And we all uh, presume, anyways, since Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, they've been working on at least one project, if not two. And Nintendo's thought process might have been why even approach Retro Studios with Metro Prime 4 and put the pressure on them when we know they're working on whatever, whether it's Star Fox Racing or whatever game they happen to be working on. You know, we don't actually know. Uh, we don't know if that game is put on hold or if it's still coming out and it's finished. We don't really know anything about that. But 
Uh, what we do know is that Retro Studios are the ones that reached out to Nintendo, apparently, and said, hey, look, here's a playable demo. Like, we want this. Like, if you're going to make Metro Prime 4, we should be doing it. Uh, so good on Retro for that, uh, reaching out. So that, that should take care of some of the some of the uh, that that desire. You might be like, why wasn't Retro Studios doing it the whole time? I mean, they had a chance to make Metroid Prime 4 uh, back when Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze was made. They were given a choice by Nintendo of making Metroid or Donkey Kong, and they chose Donkey Kong. Uh, so they had a chance, and they chose not to do it. So I'm guessing that they, my feeling, my gut feeling, I have no evidence, and this isn't from Imran Khan, is that they thought that that Metroid Prime was basically complete, that it was a trilogy of games, and they were done after Metroid Prime 3. I'm not going to spoil the ending of Metroid Prime 3, but if you get to the ending of Metroid Prime 3, you might kind of understand why Retro Studios might have been like, hey, look, it's done. We concluded. We're, we're good to go. Uh, but Nintendo obviously recognized that the Metroid Prime series is the most popular Metroid's ever been, and uh, they wanted to continue it. And uh, I guess if anyone's going to continue it, it makes a lot of sense for Retro to be the one to do that. Now, that being said... Uh, there's obviously been talks and rumors and people wondering, well, what about the Metroid Prime Trilogy? It would be the perfect time to drop the Metroid Prime Trilogy to kind of, you know, tide Metroid fans over until Prime 4. Yeah, we're sad it's delayed, but we're happy it's back in the hands of Retro. Blah, 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 blah. You know, whatever. What are we going to play in the meantime if, as Metroid fans? Uh, why not have the Metroid Prime Trilogy in HD, right? That would be pretty cool. Well, here is what Imran Khan actually had to say about that. Remember, he is the senior editor of Game Informer, so one of the more reliable sources you can have for information like this. Now, still a rumor. Nintendo hasn't confirmed anything, but here's what he had to say. The Metroid Prime Trilogy Switch port has been completed for quite some time. It was originally going to be announced last month. I'm guessing uh, Game Awards was probably when they were going to drop it, but uh, they decided... Uh, not to do it since they were shifting the development of Metroid Prime 4. Uh, they didn't want to like drop that news and then have like this dark cloud hanging over everyone without the public knowing about it. Uh, and he also said that there's more Metroid stuff in development. Uh, I don't know if that means like a Metroid Prime Federation Forces 2 or uh, a 2D side-scrolling Metroid uh, or, or something like that. But what he's saying is that there's more than one Metroid game being worked on, but obviously Metroid Prime 4 is the big daddy of them all, uh, and that one's going to be a little while, as Nintendo has already told us today. So what we learn out of this is, assuming that his sources are correct and that he's not just putting this stuff out there to get attention on him, it's not even going to his publication, uh, and he doesn't have that many followers on Twitter. He's got about 7,000 or so. Heck, I think we actually have more followers on Twitter than he does. But that doesn't mean anything. He's a professional in the industry. I'm literally staring at, at the latest Game Informer magazine right now. I actually really enjoy the Game Informer magazine. Um, it, <laughs> to be honest, the only reason I have a, a GameStop uh, membership card is because the Game Informer magazine actually is pretty good. If you actually go in there and you read it, I don't trust the reviews, but a lot of their previews, um, and, and all of their news pieces that they get, like, oh, there's pretty good stuff in there. That being said, enough praise on Game Informer. The point is that uh, I have no reason to doubt what he's saying. Um, we have not heard any information on Metroid Prime 4's development until now. This is the first possible hint at it that it's been split up between multiple studios, wasn't coming together very well. Retro Studios is like, hey, look, here's a playable demo. We want this. Nintendo looked at the demo, and they're like, yes, that's Metroid. That's the quality we want. Why did we not not like? Why did we not just go to you originally? Is probably what Nintendo was thinking the whole time. Like we, why didn't we? Why didn't we? You know, yeah, you were working on a project, but why didn't we contact you and be like, hey, can you put together a small team to start working on Metroid Prime Four like a couple years ago? Uh, and then they maybe wouldn't have announced it in 2017, but maybe they would announce it this past E3 or this upcoming E3 um, when they were complete with whatever project they're working on and had their full team working on Metroid Prime. Anyways, obviously hindsight's 2020. Nintendo probably wishes they handled the development of Metroid Prime Four differently and had Retro Studios. Um, in on it day one that being said um the metro prime trilogy uh there's some other rumors floating out there there were you guys remember that grinch leak the, the entire nintendo switch grinch leak out there uh you know the, the grinch has stole christmas uh and absolutely oh, an amazing leak one of the greatest fake leaks maybe of all time because of um how undebunkable it really all felt like every piece of information that came out to quote-unquote debunk the rumor 
ended up making that rumor stronger, which is very rare when it comes to um, any sort of leak or any sort of fake leak that just because some evidence comes out, that evidence actually strengthened the case of that leak. It was, it was crazy. Well, that was fake. And a bunch of people were calling it fake, including Imran Khan. And now people like him and others are starting to say the Metroid Prime trilogy is coming. Uh, Direct Feed Games on Twitter, uh, who, someone who, who I have had the luxury of actually chatting with, on Spawncast a couple times, uh, he has come out and said that the Metroid Prime Trilogy was always planned to come out uh, early in this year, uh, you know, basically first half of 2019, and that it was supposed to be announced back in December, which lines up with what Imran Khan says, and he says as far as he's aware, that is still the plan, they just delayed the uh, the information for it. So basically, uh, instead of announcing it last December, they basically will announce it in the next Nintendo Direct. And getting this Metroid Prime 4 news out of the way right now will actually make the announcement of that Metroid Prime trilogy that much more impactful. This is Nintendo, the business realizing fan impact wise let's get metroid prime 4's um news out of the way and then drop the trilogy in a direct makes a ton of sense oh and by the way the trilogy is coming soon that's only going to hype people up even more so it appears the metroid prime trilogy is the thing it's been done and it's coming soon now again these are all rumors i can't verify any of this i do happen to trust direct feed games uh they've been very reliable on information in the past surprisingly so you might be like oh isn't that just a channel that puts up direct feed footage of video games yeah that's primarily what they do that's what the channel's about and yeah his name's nate and maybe because his name's nate i'm more likely to believe him i don't know but he's been right on stuff in the past as well and imran khan you know he doesn't just throw things out willy-nilly these are the things he is hearing from his sources who have been correct on information in the past so honestly it's a rumor but it's some of the most believable rumors I have heard in some time, you know, forget the fake direct leaks, forget the Grinch leak. Uh, yeah, there's been some data mining, which to me is less of a rumor. It's more of a here's factual information that's in the game. Do with it what you will. Uh, but like actual leaks, actual information, it feels like now we're starting to get a better grasp on why Metroid Prime 4 is just now being rebooted by Retro Studios and uh, that Metroid Prime Trilogy was always coming. It was done. It's been done. They were waiting for the right time to release it. It didn't make sense to announce it when they knew they were switching studios for Metroid Prime 4 and that would be a cloud hanging over it. So they're like, look, let's get that cloud out of the way. Let's let that rain fall and then let's drop Metroid Prime Trilogy. I also think they anticipated, just based on disabling the comments on the Metroid Prime 4 video, I think they anticipated that there would be a much bigger negative reaction to this reboot of Metroid Prime 4 than there actually was. Uh, so honestly, I think Nintendo is mostly in a win-win situation right now. Uh, the only disappointing thing for some is that if the Switch generation is a standard generation of five or six years, it feels like Metroid Prime 4 would be on pace to be on the next generation of systems. There is a chance, though, that it could be a family of systems style of thing. Uh, we talked about family of systems with Switch before. Um, you know, if you consider DS and 3DS like the same family of systems, after all, 3DS can play all DS games, uh, just because it might come out on the Switch 2 as like a launch game for Switch 2, it, it could still be on the original Switch as well, and it could just be you know an upgraded platform and fully backwards compatible, and it, it might end up being just fine, so who knows? All I know is I'm excited uh, to see Metro Prime 4 uh, in two to three years, uh, and I, I really want to see Metro Prime Trilogy in HD. I think it's going to be gorgeous. Um, it, it's one of those games, you know, that in like Mario Galaxy that I really want to see put in HD on Switch. So I'm excited, and I hope you're excited for that too. Metro Prime Trilogy HD, it looks like it's coming at some point this year. Uh, and yeah, I mean, now we kind of have some potential information on why Metro Prime 4 uh, had to be moved to Retro in the first place. And uh, that Retro wanted it, and they made that want clear by releasing a demo to Nintendo that was very impressive. Anyways, you guys let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. Again, still rumors, not necessarily true, but it's reportedly what's going on. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Be sure to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. I want to thank every single one of you for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next one.